I have a new video for you guys because Britney Spears' father's a lawyer is speaking out on Good Morning America, trying to defend her father and make a case that Britney's dad is the good guy. The people have it so wrong. Britney knows that her daddy loves her. If Britney's daddy, oh God, loves her so much, then why is she scared of him? And why won't he let her free? So today we're going to react to this interview and talk about why Britney's father's lawyer, Vivian, is absolutely wrong. So let's get into it. <music> You guys might recognize Vivian because she was recently featured in the docuseries Framing Britney Spears, which was about Britney Spears' conservatorship and what she's been going through. Honestly, I give that docuseries a 3 out of 10 because it left out so much. But pretty much this woman has been representing Britney's father for some time. She was actually part of the original lawyers who put Britney Spears in this conservatorship. And now she's representing her father, trying to make her dad look like he's the good guy in all of this. We always talk about the fact that Britney was only 26 years old and she was diagnosed with dementia. Well, you can thank Vivian for that because she is the one who filed the paperwork claiming that Britney has dementia and that she needs to be put under a conservatorship with her father. So let's go ahead and react and watch this little interview with Good Morning America because I think it's insane the claims that she's making on camera trying to make Britney's dad look good. If you guys want to watch this full clip without me stopping in between, I will link it below, but I think we're going to have to stop because I'm sure Good Morning America would not be happy with me using their footage. Hey, good morning, Michael. Conservatorships are usually put in place for people who courts find to be unable to make decisions for themselves, and Brittany has been under one since she was in her 20s. She is now- Since she was 26 years old, she's been in conservatorship for 13 years now. Literally this month marked 13 years. After this month, it'll be 13 years in one month. 30 and thanks in part to a recent documentary and a social media movement, people are now asking, why does she still need one? Ooh. I understand that every story needs a villain. The people have it so wrong here. This is I don't understand, like, why is Vivian, like, again, why is she behind in the bushes? Like, are we trying to make it look like Framie Britney Spears? Like, it's just, just her, her good lighting? Is this what she likes? I find it kind of odd that she's outside by a bush again. I actually had to edit out some of the bird sounds in the background, but let's hear what she has to say. Wrong here. This is a story about a fiercely loving, dedicated, and loyal father who rescued his daughter from a life-threatening situation rescued his daughter from a life th hold on like it's hard for me to keep up with all these claims rescued i love that term they like they were harming her and they were exploiting her jamie saved britain's life I think that Jamie and his corrupt crew of critters have been exploiting britney spears but let's move on following a bitter divorce custody battle and two hospitalizations. You guys know that we recently just talked about K-Fed in a video I posted yesterday. It was a very bitter custody battle. And I think that he planned this out so that he can make $40,000 a month off of Britney Spears. Placed under a court mandated conservatorship, which has been making medical and financial decisions for her in the last 13 years. <laughs> Jamie's attorneys say court documents show that when he stepped in as conservator in 2008, Brittany this has actually been debunked before. I just want to put that out there that I've seen people debunk that Britney did have more than $3 million or whatever back in 2008. And of course, James has been lowballing her net worth because they can't explain the rest of the money that has just gone away. Obviously not gone away, but gone into the pockets of Andrew Wallet, Lou and Taylor, and all the rest. These assets were only worth $2.8 million. They say he worked with his daughter to restore her finances under the conservatorship to nearly 60 million in 2019. It's a shocking number to know. 60 million is not how much that she should be worth. And like, I'll throw up the chart right here with all the pop princesses and their net worth. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Jessica Simpson has her shoes and her clothes and stuff. But like, Britney had these residencies where she should have been making like, <laughs> like how much she's worth literally in one residency. So that means a lot of people are getting cuts of her money and they're getting pretty big cuts too. Okay, here's a, a, a rock star, a, a, a pop star, a young woman who's making 40 million a year and somehow she only ends up with 2.8 million in the bank. Does Jamie know how that happened? Brittany's assets were clearly being mismanaged and she was being taken advantage of financially 
by some of those around her. How did Jamie... I feel like she needs to replace was with is. Like, she is being financially taken advantage of because she was by her former business manager. Turned Britney's finances around so dramatically. He has collaborated with her. Uh, he, when she is up for performing, she has performed. When she wants to record an album, she can record an album. And when she wants to live her life the way she wants, like a normal person, he has collaborated with her to do that as well. I love how when Britney went on a working strike in 2019, her business manager changed her 5% fee to a flat fee of $500,000 a year. And just reminds me that, no, she can't do whatever she wants because at the end of the day, these people are going to have to get paid. So if she wants to live her normal life, it's not going to happen because they're going to go and release merch like they've been doing. Release unreleased music that Britney did not approve to go out there because they want to continue making money off of her even during her working hiatus. Like, she doesn't want to be working right now. So why do they keep forcing things out there? In November, her attorney telling a judge, my client has informed me that she is afraid of her father, adding she will not perform again if her father is in charge of her career. Can you explain why Britney? That's a huge thing because Britney's lawyer, Samuel Ingham, has told the courts that Britney is scared of her father. So let's see what Vivian has to say about doesn't that. doesn't want her dad in charge of her finances anymore and she's actually saying at least through her lawyer her lawyer is saying that britney says she won't perform anymore until her dad is no longer in charge of her why would that happen why would that statement be made like yeah exactly and i feel like vivian right here she's like oh crap because like how do you explain that throughout 2020 Brittany and her father had many conversations. And in fact, early on in the pandemic, they spent two weeks with other family members hunkered down in Louisiana. Brittany and Jamie went on long drives together. They played and worked in the family garden. Wait, so this is her aunt? Okay, this is her answer to why her client, uh, why Brittany is scared of her client. Okay. And every night, Jamie cooked Southern comfort food that the family ate and enjoyed together. <laughs> Every night, Jamie cooks Southern comfort food that they would eat and enjoy together. So why would Brittany be scared? Like, what are you talking about? Like, at, her reasoning is so odd. Like, you can tell that she is a pretty, I guess, a decent lawyer because she's able to swerve this whole question into left field. And in that time, Brittany never expressed those words to her father. She's never asked him to step aside. Jamie's attorney says these videos, Jamie says he and the Spears family filmed and shared exclusively with ABC News, are from that family gathering, Brittany forcing around with her sister, Jamie Lynn, riding a bike with her niece and playing around with her family, including Jamie in the beard in the garden. In the beard. Oh, God, Jamie. I love how they just, like, show this exclusive, like, footage and it's supposed to... Um, completely counteract the fact that her lawyer made a legitimate claim that Brittany is scared of her father. So. so is it the belief that this is something her lawyer's saying and that it's not coming from Brittany herself? Jamie loves his daughter. And like any other family, issues come up from time to time. But this in no way the takes away from the love and support that they have for each other. Brittany knows that her daddy loves her. And she knows that she can call on him anytime, conservatorship or not. Vivian, it Vivian, do not use the term daddy ever again, sweetie. Like, this is a, that's your first strike. Don't ever say that again. It is difficult to understand then why Brittany Sawyer actually took it a step further and said that Brittany was scared of her father, scared of Jamie. Does Jamie have any idea why that statement would be made? Yeah. In the many conversations that Jamie and Brittany had throughout 2020, Brittany never said those things to Jamie. She never asked. Okay, I don't understand. What do you mean she never said those things to Jamie? Because she's scared of him, bro. Like, he has physically done things to her, from what I've heard from people who have been close to the family. It's like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, she, if she's scared of him, she's not going to tell him to get out of her way because she's been controlled by him for 13 years. And any time she's ever wanted something, he's had about 15 other people and a bunch of other handlers ready to go make sure that it's done how he wants it to be done. She never asked him to step aside. 
If Brittany, through her lawyer, though, is asking that Jamie, her father, not be a part of her conservatorship, why does Jamie then still insist on being her conservator? Jamie serves as Brittany's conservator because he loves her. Oh, my God. Like, I just wish I would get, like, this is so hard to watch because she seems like she's just trained into what to say. Almost every answer isn't what we want to hear. He wants the best for Brittany. Hey, go, go. What do you make of the free Britney movement? I think we have to remember how this conservatorship was started. Okay. And that Britney... And that you made a claim that Britney at 26 years old has dementia. You waived her ability, her constitutional right to know that she was being put in conservatorship. You put her in like a medical facility. You got all this paperwork done in an emergency hearing. And then she comes out and she has nothing to her name because her father owns all of it. Like, what do you... This was so unfair. And that's why the conservatorship was put into place and why Jamie was appointed. Has Jamie asked Brittany, because Brittany could put this all to an end right now. If she just said, hey guys, um, everything's cool. I don't need to be freed. I'm living my life the way I want to live it. Can you imagine Brittany saying that, especially after her boyfriend recently said, like, spoke some crap about you know Brittany's father. It's like, I feel like Brittany truly does want to be free and this conservatorship, there's a reason why there's a free Britney movement. It's not like we just made this whole thing up. Like she wants to be freed. And this woman, Vivian, is part of the reason why Britney isn't free. I've got people around me who are guiding me. Why wouldn't she just put that out there on social media? You'll have to ask Britney. You'll have to ask Britney. Like how would we even ask Britney at all? Britney hasn't been able to talk to anyone. Even the Framing Britney Spears documentary, they tried to reach out to Britney and they said that they, don't know if she ever received their message. So I don't think there's any asking Britney. But as you guys know, Vivian was rehired by Britney's father last August to help him keep her in this conservatorship. And Vivian's doing her job. She's doing press, uh, she's making statements, and you guys can see that there are two sides here. And they will be fighting publicly, using media in certain ways to manipulate how the public sees this situation and to paint a different picture than what's actually going on behind the scenes. And just so you guys know, Vivian isn't all sparkles and angel dust because she's actually currently being sued for um, damages being done because of how poorly she did her job. Uh, this case is going to happen in 2022. That's when it's scheduled. But like Vivian is on the bad side of the lawyers. Like she's the type who um, ends up getting sued after she does her job because she did it so poorly. So I feel like she's ruthless. She's here to break rules. She does not care about Britney's constitutional rights. And she's fully prepared to work with Britney's father to keep her trapped in this conservatorship for however long he wants her to for the rest of her life. I mean, at this point, I feel, I don't know if Brittany will get out. I really hope she does, but we have to really keep this movement alive and we can't allow these lawyers to go on Good Morning America and to convince everyone that Brittany's father is a good guy when he needs and he knows he needs to step down immediately. Before we close out this video, let's go ahead and take a look at Britney's Instagram. So she has been posting recently. She posted these pictures of some, I think they're cows, right? With horns. But she writes, just saying, geez, look at those horns. P.S. I took this picture. Aw, it's so cute. Miss Photographer Queen. And you guys can see Jamie Lynn commented, looks familiar because I'm assuming maybe they're at the same place. Or what if that was like the little trip that they were just showing in the interview? Like, I low-key feel like they always try to like line up things together. Here's a picture of her and Sam, and honestly, they look so cute. She said, these pictures are from our last trip to Maui. And oh, I really, I really just hope that Brittany is happy. Like, I'm not trying to come for Sam. I just want her to be happy and around genuine people. And I honestly don't even want her dad to be like, kicked out of her life. I just don't want him to be controlling her life. Let her have a sense of self and independence and they could rebuild their relationship after years and years of turmoil. Brittany also posted this video where she writes, the last video that I posted of me dancing was from months ago, hence why my body looks a little different in this new video. No, I didn't follow through with the ice cream diet. I chose proportion control, which is very hard when it comes to Doritos. On a positive note, my body does feel way better now. If you're wondering why I have socks on the tips of my toes, well, I'm waiting for real lyrical shoes. 
The marble floor has done a number on my feet with blisters, so white tape covered with black socks. I find it kind of odd that she's got blisters and all this on her feet when she's not, like, required to dance at all. Unless she's, like, wanting to dance for fun. It's like, she's not, like, currently working, so why would she have to be dancing so hard? To the point where she's got blisters and her feet are all, like, raw. My lyrical shoes come tomorrow, and I haven't worn a pair since I was nine. So I'm sure they're even better these days. God bless and sending love to all you guys. And then there's this iconic video where Sam is carrying Brittany. <laughs> She's like, I don't feel like walking right now. And he's like, no problem. And she wrote, man, it's so fun out here, especially when you don't have to do anything at all. And she tagged Sam. So that is what's going on with Britney's Instagram. I'm still waiting for the day that she low-key, like, references the conservatorship. I mean, I feel like she has, but, like, even more. But this is the end of the video. At the end of my video, I usually open P.O. Box packages. And I got this one from las vegas but it looks like it's like from the fulfillment center so let's go ahead and open this together um if you guys didn't know i usually open peel packages at the end of my videos if i have one like i don't always have peel packages but i went recently and i had a bunch of stuff so i have been able to open things and it looks like someone sent me um a book oh okay let's see if there's a little tag in here there is okay cool because usually um if you do send something from amazon they'll give you a little gift tag this is my friend's poetry book and i thought it would be cool read for you from Amal. And then your Instagram is a modest revolutionary. Oh, wow. I'll tag you below. Thank you so much, Amal. And this is so cool that you, <gasps> how I became the sea. Wow. It's a poetry book by Marina Maher. Maher? I'm probably saying the last name wrong. Wow. This is really cool. <gasps> I love meaningful things like this because now I can go like on my hammock and go and read this out there and be like, yeah, like Amal sent me this. It's like his friend. Wow. I also am very, very, like, connected with the ocean. Like, my dream is to live at the beach. I love the ocean so much. I stay in the ocean for hours and hours when I go to the beach. So being part of the sea is literally me. And, like, I actually even recently I got, like, a I, I store things in, like, plastic storage bins. And I got a storage bin that I'm starting to put, like, um, beach things in there that I want to have in a beach house one day. Like, I'm trying to manifest that because I just love the ocean so much. And I would be so happy to live near the sea. So this is a little reminder of that, but I'm really excited to read this poetry book and I really appreciate it, Mal. Thank you so much. This is so thoughtful and kind and I'm glad that you have a connection to it as well because it makes it even more meaningful. So thank you so much and I will see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.